Americans have traveled over 5,000 miles to play a game that will change their lives forever. This adventure is designed to push them right to the edge. They may look like nice people, but one of them is the mole, here to sabotage. The rest of the players and you must solve the mystery and uncover the mole. Twelve strangers, ten weeks, one winner, taking home up to a half million dollars. But one of them is being paid to deceive the others and sabotage their missions. That person is the mole. The player that figures out who the mole is and does the best job of tracking and remembering their every move wins the money. Can you figure it out? Who is the mole? Is it Victoria, a 26-year-old retail manager from Bishop, Texas? Mark, a 42-year-old history teacher and soccer coach from McGuanago, Wisconsin? Bobby, a 25-year-old restaurant manager from Philadelphia? Marcy, a 31-year-old stay-at-home mom from Corona, California. Nicole, a 33-year-old OBGYN from Chicago. Paul, a 29-year-old utility worker from Yonkers, New York. Alex, a 31-year-old musician from Haverford, Pennsylvania. Liz, a 60-year-old retiree from Whitefish, Montana. Allie, a 24-year-old model from St. Louis, Missouri. Clay, a 32-year-old attorney from West Grove, Pennsylvania. Craig, a 30-year-old graphic artist from San Diego. Or Kristen, a 35-year-old neuroscientist from Santa Monica, California. Who is the mole? The players have all just met. So for the mole, the deception begins now. Hello, everybody. I'm John Kelly. Welcome to the mole. Thank you very much for joining me up here at the beautiful Salto de Laja Waterfalls. Yeah. I've been obsessed with the mole since it started. The game is just one big, huge mind game. It's all about how well you know people and how well you can lie. I mean, you have to have game on from the first minute. You meet everyone. Well, but now you've had some time to hang out, get to know each other a little bit, and start figuring out who is the mole based on your first impressions. Let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. Who do you think the mole is right now? I want you each to grab one of these cards. It's a secret ballot. And circle the player you think is the mole. OK, everybody. And the person who most of you suspect is the mole is Marcy. Why don't you come on over here? Come stand next to me. They think you're the mole already. That's OK. How does that make you feel? That, that makes me feel good. When John said the players think I'm the mole, I was happy because you want to try to make people think that you are the mole. Well, right now, I'm about to put all their suspicions to the test. For the next 24 hours, Marcy has a distinct advantage. She'll be making all the decisions for the entire group, including tonight's mission. I definitely think Marcy could be the mole. That's very scary at this point in time because she was in that prime position to sabotage. As you may know, South America is world famous for its waterfalls. In the past, guides would paddle their rafts right up to the edge of waterfalls with groups full of excited tourists eager to take in a breathtaking view. In 1938, a tour guide took it a little too close to the edge. And the guide, along with a raft full of German tourists, bent kaput right over the edge. But gave me a great idea for our very first mission. One at a time, you'll go over and climb on one of those rafts. You'll take that raft, navigate it downstream, and over the falls. 
What? <laughs> what? I couldn't believe it. I was, I, we're jumping off a waterfall. I could die. Suspended over the edge will be one of these burlap money bags. As you go over the falls, you must leap off of your raft, reach out, and grab this bag. Here's the catch. Six of you will be jumping for money in the bag. $10,000 in each of those bags. The other five of you, oh, you'll be jumping for a bag full of worthless paper. Marcy, she'll be deciding which six of you jump for the cash, and you'll decide which five of them jump for nothing. Of course, none of you are going to know if you're jumping for cash or you're jumping for nothing until after everyone has completed the jump. You guys go ahead and get ready for the mission. And Marcy, stay with me. The suspected mole, you have a chance to decide who gets to jump for the money. You know Sixth what, though, listen, it's grand. all fun, but you guys got to realize that we could end up staying here. Oh, well, we don't know that. And then well, we'll dude, hey, take <laughs> one thing at a time. We don't know that yet. Yeah. Who cares if we're staying here or not? Yeah, we're jumping chill. over a freaking waterfall. <laughs> God, who cares where you're sleeping? You got it. My greatest fear are definitely falling from a great height and, and you know, finding myself drowning. So you want to do this? Yes, sir. OK. As a performer, I'm good on my feet in certain situations. I knew it was do or die. Here he goes! It. Oh my god! She probably picked him to get it, too. Huh. Alex looks suspicious because it's, the bag just looks so far from him, and it almost just looked like he could have just given it a little bit more. I think everyone was counting on him because he's one of the more athletic guys. Hey, sorry, everybody. Yeah. All right. Come on. I was scared. I can feel myself starting to shake. I said a couple prayers. I said, dear Lord Jesus, um, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here right now. Please just give me your strength. Help me through this. Come on, Ellie! Oh, she's on, guys, oh, she's on! Got it in her sights. She's in. She's got it, she's got it! Oh! oh. I was disappointed. Allie, she looks physically fit. I thought that she should be able to get the bag. I really did. It's game time. Get the bag, bottom line. All right. Being an attorney, I don't jump waterfalls. I try to stay in shape, but at most, I'm like, you know, jumping over my kids' toys. have secured their first bag, but does it have real money or worthless paper inside? Being isolated from the group, I didn't like it because um, I wanted to be able to get to know these players. So it kind of bothered me just a little bit that I didn't get to go do that. Christian! Woo! Yeah! I'm a neuroscientist and a natural athlete, so I knew I was doing it. I had no fear. When it was my turn, I was definitely nervous because they told us there was a slim chance that you could hang yourself. Please don't get the bag, it'll make me look really bad. Oh no. I think that everyone thought, uh-oh, poor little old lady, she's not gonna be able to do it. It's 
So it was wonderful to be able to get out there and show them my stuff. As soon as I got on the raft, I, I thought, I have to get this bag. My daughter, when she grows up, will say, you couldn't get a st uh, the bag. Six-year-old lady got the bag. Go, go, go. Go, go. Six-year-old lady gets the bag, and I do not get the bag. So my worst fear has come true. Man, it's close. When John told us that we were going over the falls, I was thinking, heck no, I'm not going over the falls. Ugh. And I was really, really scared. But I was a cheerleader in college. You know, I'm, I'm pretty athletic. Stand up, stand up, stand up! I wasn't going to let myself or the team down. Oh! Hopefully it wasn't real money in there. Whatever, Mo. When I looked at that waterfall and I saw the rope going over the waterfall, the first thing that popped into my mind was, that thing can't hold me. I thought for sure that, I mean, I was going to plummet to my death. The rope was going to snap. So I was going to be able to do it, but I was probably going to die. Get it, 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 sudden, I'm going over the falls, and there's the bag right there, so I just jump for it, and the, the line pulls taut and just chokes me like a hanged man. No thought in my head of grabbing anything. It's just survival. Think she can make this? I think she can make it. I have a fear of heights. And when I decided to go for it, I wanted to conquer that fear. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm very competitive. Whether I'm playing something or whether I'm coaching, I really don't like losing. I see losing as failure. in here or someone's getting killed. Well, I gotta admit, I am thoroughly impressed. Each and every one of you stepped up and you went over the falls. And we can see you ended up with six bags. Time to see if Marcy chose the right players to jump for the real money. Nicole, take a look inside your bag. Oh, green. Sorry, that's fake mole money. Boo. All right, Kristen, let's see if Marcy trusted in you. Okay, come on, girlfriend. Oh, Marcy! Oh, for two so far, Marcy. I was surprised she didn't pick Kristen. She's very athletic. She's tall, too. It, you know, that's an advantage, so that was suspicious. Bobby O, I'm checking her back. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Bobby oh. oh, no! I was livid. It was obviously a little bit suspicious. I mean, you have to think it's suspicious. Mark, did Marcy trust you? There you go. <laughs> That's $10,000. $10,000. Next, Liz. Do you believe in little old ladies, Marcy? <laughs> uh -oh. More worthless paper. Hmm. We've got one final bag here. Yeah! Okay, another $10,000 goes into the pot. Well, to recap, you got two bags with the $10,000 cash, so that means in this first mission, you bag $20,000.
When I found out that we only put 20,000 in the pot, I was disappointed. You know, we have to perform better. That's, you know, that's what we're here to do. That could be $60,000 in the pot easily. I absolutely thought I was jumping for money, 100%. Time to hand out the journals. This is the only place you can write notes and observations during the game that will help you figure out who the mole is. I was excited because I knew I'd be able to take down notes. I gotta start writing. What's suspect? What's not? What do I think? What do I think about the mission? What do I think about the players? If you guys remember earlier, I told you that the person that most of you suspected was the mole, which happened to be Marcy, would be making all the decisions for the entire group. Well, that also includes where you're gonna sleep tonight. I have a cabin, but uh, it's a little small. Only eight of you can be inside where it's warm, which means four of you will have to sleep outside. All right, outside is Nicole, Liz, Craig, and Bobby. Keep in mind, the rules are you have to sleep where you're assigned. I'll see all of you tomorrow for your next mission. Tomorrow? I'm not sleeping outside in the 40 degrees. Absolutely not. I'm going, I'm coming in. Seriously. That's, gotta get you in. it's not All even right. a question. I don't have to do anything but stay black and die. That's all I ever have to do. I'm not sleeping outside. I'm very annoyed that Marcy would pick me to sleep outside. I'm not going yeah. outside. We have to sleep. Are you one of the people that's supposed to be outside? Yeah, but they said you had to sleep outside. Right. I'm not sleeping. Oh. Since they said all you have to do is sleep outside, well, I said if I'm staying in the rules, I'm just not going to sleep. I know how to stay up all night. So, so what is this like a little bitch thing? Is that what's no, going on here? I just know how to stay up all night. It, it's called circumvention. Nicole comes in. I got a way to circumvent the rules. The girl expected to be put up in five-star hotels, so she just kept getting more and more on my nerves. If you can't do it, Nicole, you shouldn't be here. Do me a favor, fill this out for me, too, when you're done. Thank you. I appreciate it. I got a photogenic memory. Mole 101. As the night winds down, many take the opportunity to write their observations in their journals, which will be key in helping them with the upcoming quiz, where they will be asked 10 questions about the mole. The player that scores the lowest on the quiz will be executed and must leave the game immediately. This game is hard. I forget a lot of things and I'm writing it down so I can go back into it for the quiz. Meanwhile, the players who must sleep outside settle in for a cold night. Yeah. Uh -huh. Log on to abc.com to take tonight's quiz and compare your answers with the rest of America. Well, no, because to get around the rule of having to sleep outside, certain people wanted to stay up all night. I'd been up all night and I just kept myself company until dawn. Do anything for a blow dryer. <sighs> and a curling iron. Oh! oh. <laughs> Coalition time or what? <laughs> Nobody else is listening. For some reason, I had a gut feeling that Marcy was the person I, I needed to have my coalition with. Coalitions are important for sharing information and misleading people. You good? I'm good, but it's gotta be to the end. I feel that I'm a good judge of character. No, no BS. Right to God, I will kill you. <laughs> I will hunt you down and find you. I do. Being a mom and having kids has been helpful in this game because I can look into players' faces, like look into my kids' faces, and when they're not completely telling me the truth, I can tell. Check it. We got a clue here, big clue. Good morning, mi amigos. Time to get ready for your next mission. You'll meet me at Buddha Beach. So, dress accordingly. Dress beach. accordingly, beachwear, beachwear! I'm definitely driving, that's it. I basically took control of driving. I kind of had a feeling that I was gonna use Alex in the future of this, so I just implemented, hey Alex, you're gonna drive that second car. Me and Alex are driving, I'm in this van, Alex is in that van. 
go. Alex and Polly obviously have a coalition, and it's the dumbest coalition ever, I think. Everyone knows about it. They make it so obvious. It's just ridiculous. Hello, players. Hello. Hi. Today, I want to know who you guys believe is the group's biggest whiner. <gasps> I have to say, Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> yes, I agree. Nicole. Yeah, I'd have to say Nicole. Yeah. Well, by a landslide votes, Nicole. Oh. I don't whine. I voice my opinions. What's wrong with being smart and gorgeous at the same time? Nicole is the type of person you love to hate, basically. I'm guessing most of you have heard about the book Robinson Crusoe. It's based on the true life story of Alexander Selkirk. Selkirk was a sailor stranded on a deserted island off the coast of Chile back in 1704. And man, he was a big time whiner. Just bitched and moaned nonstop all day long. Matter of fact, he made so much noise, his captain one day just got fed up, pulled over to the nearest island, tossed him off on the beach. Very similar to this one. Right now, our whiner, do you mind if I call you whiner? Dr. Whiner. Dr. Whiner, yes. Dr. Weiner, she's gonna be your cell Kirk. Dr. Weiner, okay. your first duty today is yes. to pick out six scavengers, three appraisers, and two timekeepers. Scavengers, let's have Craig, Marcy, Alex, Bobby, Victoria, Clay. Three appraisers. Christy, Liz, and Mark. That leaves Paul and Allie as the timekeepers. Okay, players. <laughs> There are 45 items scattered all over the beach. Your mission is to find which five items Selkirk had with him on the island in the year 1704. Here's how the game works. Scavengers, you have to try and scoop up all the items that you can get. You will then deliver them to the appraisers. Appraisers, use your knowledge and your logic to figure out exactly which items Selkirk had with him in 1704. You must bring them over to this table and Ring that bell. You have three chances to guess the correct five items. You're gonna have to hurry. We well, see that big hourglass over there? Yeah, it's a special hourglass. And you see the sand in there? That's only gonna last about 10 minutes. Timekeepers, what you'll have to do is scoop up sand and keep running up and down those stairs, refilling the hourglass. When the hourglass runs out of sand, the mission is over. For every item you guess correctly, I will put $5,000 into the pot. Are you guys ready to get this on? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let me get over here and start this. Come on, Let's go. Leave it on that first rung. I see the Victrola. I see the go. I noticed that most of the girls were doing most of the running, and some of the guys were just kind of sauntering a little bit. Let's go! I was selected as a scavenger, which to me seemed ridiculous because I knew that I would be running all over the beach. Obviously, that's not one of my best qualities. God! I had no idea what I was looking for, and at a certain point, I was just like, hey, get what you can find. Let the appraisers parse it out. Come on, let's go! I was pulling the goat, and he kept pulling me back. How are we going to get this goat on the table? Put it in. Put it in. Sewing machine? Did he have a sewing machine? Did he have a hat? I picked Mark on purpose because of his history teacher background, and he did seem a little bit lost with the items. Maybe he's the mole. Got a hair dryer. I thought the scavengers wasted a ton of time and energy bringing stuff back that they knew full well wasn't going to be around in the 17th. They were bringing a vacuum and an electric fan. Here. No vacuum. And I'm going, no, will you stop it? Just put that over there for right now. And what would he have plugged it into? Craig brought over the mole sign. That's not funny. I can't move. Like, seriously, I can't even. My heart is, like, dying. I look over, and Bobby O's, like, grasping his chest like he's an 80-year-old war veteran. Seemed a little suspicious. 
Okay, we got this the troll, the goat. Hey, if we get desperate, throw that book on there. Let's put, can we, the troll? Okay, so you're certain on the troll. After several combinations, the appraisers agree on an antique battery, a bowler hat, a Bunsen burner, a Victrola, and a goat. <laughs> ring the bell. Yeah, ring the bell. Okay, your first try, you got one item correct. Oh, one. 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 All right. I was sure he had a Victrola somewhere, but you know what? That must have been Swiss Family Robinson. I no longer need dinner. I've had a sand sandwich. I really don't like Nicole now. Time is almost out. <sighs> Hurry! But we only get two more tries. <laughs> I know. Craig is falling over from stroke, and Bobby couldn't make those skinny legs of his go through the sand, and Polly was just busting it. Dude, look at how low it is! This is just a train wreck. Dude, oh. come on! time left. So get moving! Polly's dying over there. Your sand's running out. For this mission, the players must find the five items the castaway Selkirk had with him in the year 1704. <laughs> but we only get two more tries. <laughs> I know. We got some incoming. Looks like we got a nice book. The Holy Bible. Mason jar. Let's just throw something else up there that we haven't had. For their second guess, the appraisers try a camera, a Bible, a mason jar, a musket, and a goat. <laughs> you have three, three correct items. Get rid of these two. We need two more. You only got one more ring of the bell. Right. Dude, look at how low it is. I can't move anymore. With only 28 of the 45 items uncovered, the appraisers prepare to make their final guess. <laughs> he had woolly, pants. Woolly pants. He's got to wear pants. He had woolly pants on. It's better than nothing in case. Yeah. Hurry up, hurry up. Hey, watch, watch, watch. Look, it's getting really low. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to hang out here. What do you think? What do you think? Get, get ready, get ready, get ready. Dude, come on. OK, the final ring of the bell. That's it. That's the final ring. Your clock's over. You just made it in time. I don't care. Everybody come on in here. <laughs> oh, God. OK, let's see how you did. Remember, $5,000 for each correct item. Start to the far right. That is a revolver. That is wrong. Revolver was invented in 1835. 0 for 1. Next, the musket. Correct. Next item is the Bible. You are correct again. The jeans. A little too late. 1873. Come on, man. Brain yeah. surgeons, okay. teachers, they picked blue jeans. Like, they coughed up a lung for blue jeans. <laughs> and the goat is correct. So, three out of five gives you a total of $15,000, bringing the total pot to $35,000. How do I feel about $35,000 in the pot? Look at my face. We had a chance to have 85 by now. We're either not doing well as a group or the mole is just really that good. There was tobacco in a small little box out there, which I don't see that anywhere, so maybe didn't find that one. And also there was a copper tea kettle out there. Now before we go, there's one more thing. I'm sure you thought when I started talking about Robinson Crusoe, somebody's probably gonna get left back on the beach. You're absolutely correct. The person stranded all by themselves will be Dr. <laughs> Weiner. Yeah! <laughs> when the group started laughing, I was a little bit hurt. You sleep tight. All Enjoy right. your stay on the island. Sure. Players, follow with me. Let's get out of here. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Let's go enjoy something nice and warm, everybody. While Nicole tries to make herself comfortable all alone on the beach, the wheels are turning inside the heads of the other 11 players. Like today on the beach, the very first run, Bobby was like, he was not athletic at all. Over, he's like, 
told you I was not. I mean, I'm wasn't. carrying around like 50 extra pounds, and I made it, and I wasn't hacking and popping. That was, that was kind so. of suspicious to me a little bit. Bobby could be small. What do y'all think of um, Paul and Alex? Paul is married. To Alex. No. <laughs> in my mind, some people have already eliminated themselves. I mean, in my mind, like, I just don't. Well, who's your top three right now? Oh, On geez. your list, who's your top three? I don't know. I mean, Marcy's. Marcy's then... a good choice. I definitely think Marcy could be the mole. She can flip a switch and suddenly get her game on. Uh, I'm, I'm heads and tails with her right now. Right now, Marcy is my major coalition partner. I don't believe she's the mole. At this point, I'm using Alex, and I'm, I'm actually drawing him towards Marcy, which is a beautiful thing. Right now, everyone you know, sees me and Alex, buddy, buddy, and that's exactly what I want them to think. I could work with that, all right. Buenas noches, everybody. I'd like to thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight is your first quiz and execution. Please, eat, drink, be merry, and treat it like it's your last supper. Man. <laughs> I'll take the lobster, please. That's right. Order up. Order up. We have 11 here. We are one short. Uh, anybody missing, Dr. Nicole? Dr. Diva can do what she want to do. I wanted her around so I can get more information from her. Definitely. Yeah. That's what I yeah. Yeah. So if all the questions on tonight's quiz are about her, mm. uh, yeah. we're out of luck. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, the questions would only be about her if you thought she was the mole, correct? Which would be the perfect cover. Yeah, exactly. Craig is right now my leading suspect to be the mole because he is just the person that you love to love. He's the last person that anyone would think is the mole. What's this game like actually being in it? It's hard because you're used to having the comfort and the trust of everyone. And then being, you know, away, you want to trust them so bad, but you know you can't. Going into the quiz, everybody is nervous, and I'm very nervous. I hope that I'm playing this game good. I hope that I'm playing it smart. I don't want to go home. Right now, by a show of hands, I want to know how many of you feel like you're getting a decent beat on who the mole is? Honestly. It's so early in the game, like, you know? The mole would be stupid to reveal him or herself right now. It's all about the hustle. How nervous are you guys? You got a quiz tonight. Everybody except the mole would agree that, that the quiz is by far scarier than any challenge. Yeah. Leading up to the quiz, everybody's gonna be miserable, so. That's music to the mole's ears. Well, of course it is. I feel like the way I've played the game right now, I went out a little too fast. And so I'm hoping that I get a second chance tonight to kind of start over. The main reason I am doing this is because my wife and I have both worked two jobs or more as long as we've known each other. And my wife has had to do that while raising three children. If I could make enough money that my wife wouldn't have to work anymore, that would be awesome. Because our kids aren't going to be kids much longer. And I think she needs to be with them as much as she can. I'd like to do a little toast for everybody. As I said, this is the national drink of Chile, and I have to admit these Pisco Sours are very tasty and habit-forming. So may the mole be merciful. Get ready, America. The quiz is coming up next. Welcome to your very first execution. It's time for the quiz. 10 questions about the mole. The player who scores the lowest on the quiz will be executed and must leave the game immediately. Question number one. Is the mole male or female? Number two, when did the mole jump in the Over the Falls mission? Marcy's selections didn't make sense to me. She chose all the shortest people to go for the cash, and I don't know why. Oh! <laughs> Number three, during the Crusoe mission, which group was the mole assigned to? The two.